40-year high inflation. Georgians and Americans are certainly feeling that at the pump every single day because of bad domestic energy policy. What we're trying to do in Georgia by suspending the gas tax is just give our hardworking people the ability to fight through this tough time that we're having right now because of bad policies in Washington, D.C. that obviously the states can't fix. But we were trying to give Georgians a way to fight through that. And we've had a very willing legislature that's been uh, supportive of this issue. Um, and thankfully, because our state was open and our revenues have been strong, we've been able to do this. Uh, but it can only last for so long, and that, that's why we need really changes in Washington, D.C. to try to drive down some of the prices that we're seeing around the country when it comes to gas, groceries, and other things, because it's squeezing the American consumer and squeezing hardworking Georgians. We've had some, uh, some of uh, the president's advisors on. They talk about that they've uh, made some progress in, uh, in supply chain issues, and I've, I've flown down to... Uh, you know, I'm a, a Sea Island guy. I go there all the time. I've flown down, and I've seen the congestion outside Savannah. I've seen 40 ships out there. They're not there anymore. So there have been things that can be done easily. Not easily, but, but that can be done near term. I, I think the administration has tried to do that. Any of the, the, uh, the, the long-term fossil fuel production issues, it takes more than you, it's not a switch you can turn on and off. How, what, do you, what do they need to do? What are you suggesting they need to do? Well, I don't know that I've seen any progress. If you look at the gas price chart since Joe Biden took office, they're still going up. I mean, we're thankful we got the lowest, I believe, gas prices in the country right now because of the actions that we've taken here in the state. But if you look at it overall, I mean, I saw a stat the other day, every state in the country was over $4 a gallon for the first time ever, and it's gone up since then. That was a you know, week, 10 days old. You know, we've taken great action on the supply chain here at the Port of Savannah. We're seeing increased volume right now with some wait times because we're having so many ships that are coming around from the West Coast because of problems out there and just a supply chain backlog from China and other places being shut down. But we're managing through that because we've been very proactive. Our port has grown over 20 percent in the last couple of years. We believe that's going to happen again. And again, it's because we're open. Um, you know, I have a state of emergency right now to help with the logistics supply chain on truck weights and moving goods and services through our state and other things that we're doing. And, you know, look, I think the administration needs to be doing more of those type of things and getting people going. We paid people way too long to sit at home uh, when the market was saying, hey, we need more people in the workforce. Well, the, the Biden administration has been in office, whatever, X amount of, uh, of time, uh, Governor. A lot of these are long-term issues with, uh, f for a lot of different reasons, uh, ESG. Well, well Joe, or, with all... Or, or, yeah, what, with what, all... What, what did they do? What, what did, uh, what, as of day one, what did the Biden administration do that, that you say caused the, the gas prices to be where they are today? Well, with all, with all due respect, early in the administration, they were paying people more to stay home than to get in the workforce. They wanted to continue to spend more money and flood the system, which drove inflation up. You know, they went out to the West Coast, to L.A. and Long Beach, and said they saved Christmas and the holiday season. And the same problems that they had then uh, around Thanksgiving of last year, they still have out there. Where if you look at Georgia, we had a lot of those issues, too. And by January 1st, we had clogged the backlog. Now, we're seeing that again now because of things that have been out of our control. But again, we're working through that because we took action literally months before they ever started talking about it, expanding, um, you know, land around the port where we could store more containers because there wasn't enough distribution in the system, uh, dealing with the truck issue, which was really 5 to 10 percent of the problem. So, I mean, there's actions that they can take. You look at this administration, literally in a year and a half, they've turned the country's economy upside down, driven inflation to 40-year highs, and obviously what they're doing is not working. And in Georgia, we're trying to fight through. We're sending a billion dollars of excess revenue back to the taxpayers right now. It's hitting their wallet right now, $250 for an individual, up to $500 for a family. And look, that's a, that's a substantial amount of money that's helping people buy that extra gas they need, absorb a little bit of the high grocery prices. And, you know, but not every state is able to do that, which is why the administration's got to pivot and, and try something different. It's just like at the border. You know, they got the same border policies now that they had when they came into office. And look what's happening. It's not gotten better. It's continuing to get worse. And the American people 
and hardworking Georgians are tired of that. They want them to take action to fix these problems now. I mean, look, I'm all for, you know, we're promoting the EV marketplace here. We're letting the market drive that sector. We've been very successful. But like you said, that's going to be years in the making. It's not going to, you know, we're not going to see that change, uh, the supply on fossil fuels and other things in the next two or three months.